Over 400,000 developers have been laid off since 2022. Now the market isn't dead, it's just evolving. Now I used to be a Microsoft software engineer and I also ran a startup where I hired a bunch of developers. So I've been on both sides of the table. I've applied to hundreds of jobs and I've hired a lot of developers. Now when you're on the applicant side, all that you think about is your skill, right? You're thinking about your talent, what projects you've built, how many lead code questions you can solve. When you're on the hiring side, you realize that companies don't just want a good developer. What they really want is certainty. They're looking for a safe hire and they wanna be certain that you can ship, communicate and integrate quickly into their system without needing handholding. A lot of developers like to pitch themselves as a great opportunity, someone to invest into. That's not what companies want. They want a safe hire that can provide value from day one. They want to know that you understand how to have impact, not just the syntax of a programming language. Now, this is where 90% of developers lose before they even start. They sound replaceable, their profile looks like everyone else, and they play the wrong game. Now, the market isn't harder nowadays, even though it feels like it, it's just noisier. And that noise kills a lot of opportunity. Now there are more developers than ever, right? There's never been more developers than there is right now, but there's fewer that actually stand out as problem solvers rather than people that just write code. I've literally seen insanely talented developers go six months to a year without getting a single offer. And that's purely because they positioned themselves wrong and they didn't have the right strategy for applying. And I've seen average developers get hired in four weeks because they knew how to present themselves like a top 1% candidate. And they essentially knew how to fake it until they make it and just how to play the game. Now, this is what I say all the time. Knowing how to code is a completely different skill than knowing how to get a job. Now, this is really the difference between being seen as an expense versus being seen as an asset, especially because developers demand a pretty high pay. Now, the people who are struggling struggling right now, they're not bad. They're just invisible, right? It doesn't mean that you're not a good developer. It doesn't mean that you don't have the skills. It simply means that no one is even seeing you. They're not even seeing your resume. They're not getting your profile in front of them. Now, the people that are struggling, they're sending hundreds of applications a week, doing everything they're supposed to, but no one's noticing, right? They can't break through the noise. Meanwhile, the ones who are getting hired are getting found. They're not chasing. I want you to understand that distinction, right? They're being found. Someone is actively looking for them. They're not chasing for all of these roles. Now, that's not easy to accomplish, but I want to talk more about that in this video. Now, recruiters are reaching out to these types of individuals because they've built leverage, right? Not desperation. They don't have the open to work flag on LinkedIn. They're not desperately reaching out to a million people. They're not praying that someone gives them a job and they're definitely not mass applying and just hoping they're building their profiles so that someone can actually find them and they're presenting themselves as valuable. Now, the hidden job job market is where all of the real opportunities are. And 70% plus of hires are coming from that market. Now that's referrals, inbound recruiter messages, direct offers, not job boards, not LinkedIn, right? It's not available at a surface level to everyone. That's why we're calling it hidden, but that's how you really generate a lot of opportunities and start to get those offers piling in. But in order to play this game, you need to understand positioning. Your profile has to tell a story like this person solves X problem in Y way and gets Z results results, right? Most devs never even define that. And when I ask them the question, what are you good at? What's your specialization? What type of company do you want to work for? What value do you provide? They just put their hands up and they don't know the answer. That's something that you need to know. And if you can figure out that positioning statement, that's going to help you a ton. We'll talk more about that in this video. Now, when we started helping laid off engineers, we noticed a pattern. Now, this is across almost 100 people that got hired again. They all stopped looking for jobs and they started marketing themselves like they were an offer. Just like you see an offer online, an e-com offer, a mentorship, whatever. Same thing with these developers they're marketing themselves so that people come to them, they see the value and they reach out. Now they learned how to build authority around their name so the recruiters instantly trusted them and they had massive credibility. They showcased real world business impact, not just what tech they used, but the results that they were able to produce. And they practiced interviews strategically like athletes, not just like a random person going to the gym. And most importantly, they learned how to build leverage. Now, this is a word that I use a lot. You want to do the tasks that bring you the highest amount of leverage. And you need to understand where you're actually positioned in the market and where you can generate the most amount of value. Now, instead of sitting there and begging for a single software development offer, they created multiple offers at once and made companies compete to get them. For example, one of our students, Nishal, had three offers at the time that he accepted his deal from Oracle. That's where he was making over 220k the reason he was able to get to that salary level is because he was genuinely in a position where he had leverage 
He had options and he wasn't desperate. He didn't need to beg. He could dictate the terms for his employment. And that's what a lot of people never get to, but you can if you build the right strategy. Now, when this happens, everything changes, right? When you go into an interview, the tone is completely different. Your confidence comes back up. You stop chasing and you start looking for the right opportunity for you. When you go into an interview and you have four offers in your back pocket, the pressure's off, you're relaxed, you're actually asking questions of the company as well, and it becomes a two-way street. You're no longer sitting there as the desperate candidate that's unemployed that needs a job. You now know you have a bunch of different options and you want to see if this is a company you actually want to work for. The interview shifts and not only are they interviewing you, you're interviewing them. Now the systems that we build for these students that are able to do this is simple and it follows four phases. First, visibility, then authority, then conversion, and lastly, leverage. Now let's touch on visibility. This essentially means that you need to make your online presence impossible to ignore. That's everything from your LinkedIn, your portfolio, and your GitHub. All of those should feel like an asset that helps you get hired. Every piece of information about you online should act like a piece of digital real estate that's driving people to you, right? Whether it's recruiter, whether it's a freelance client, doesn't matter. Everything that you have should demonstrate the skill that you have your authority, and that's what we're gonna get into next. Now, from the authority side of things, you can have a great profile, you know, you can have a big LinkedIn profile, big YouTube channel, whatever, but if it doesn't show business impact, then it doesn't matter. You need to show how your code actually drives outcomes, has saved time, or has made companies money. At the end of the day, what is a developer? They're a problem solver, right? That leads to some kind of business impact. Companies only hire developers because they actually drive the bottom line, right? They're able to automate some software, save some time, whatever, build something that's sold for hundreds of millions of dollars. You need to demonstrate that your dev skills are more than just purely writing code, that you understand that impact. And the more you know about the business side of things and can discuss that, the more valuable you're going to be. Now this leads us to the next point, which is conversion, right? And this is all about learning recruiter psychology, which means how to speak the language, how to handle the objections, and how to pass both the behavioral and technical routes. It's one thing to generate a bunch of opportunities, but if you don't understand how to convert them, then it doesn't matter. I always tell this to people, I would much rather have you go in for three interviews and get one or two offers from that than have to go in for 20, right? I mean, that sounds obvious, but a lot of people are so obsessed about generating a million opportunities when you really should focus on taking advantage of the few ones that you can generate quickly. There's a lot of ways to do that. Again, I talk a lot about that on my channel. And then and lastly, we have leverage. Now, once offers start coming in, once you master that conversion, you have to know how to use them and how to time and position them to negotiate higher comps and to just really control the narrative when you're getting hired. I'll give you an example. When I was getting started in the tech industry, I wanted to accept a job from Microsoft and I had an offer from Shopify. I was able to leverage that offer with my Microsoft job to negotiate a higher salary. And I was also able to go back to Shopify and see if they were able to match anything and they were able to raise the pay 20%, even though I didn't end up taking that offer. So just like recruiters are playing games with you, you do the same thing strategically to see how you can leverage these against each other and put yourself in a position where companies are fighting for you. The first offer is almost never the best offer. There's always room for negotiation if you're in a position of leverage. Now that's exactly how we've helped 20 plus laid off developers land jobs again and in half the time that the market says is normal, right? The average dev in our program goes from ghosted to multiple offers in six to eight weeks. And that's not because they're better at coding. It's not because they have a million projects. It's because they understand how hiring actually works. Again, development and getting a job is a completely different skill. You can be a really good developer. If you don't understand the market, you're not gonna get those opportunities. So if you got laid off, it's not your skill that's broken, right? I just wanna remind you of that. It's your strategy. And that's another thing that we work on a lot is getting these people's confidence back because if you've gone six months and you haven't received a single interview, it can really discourage you when again, it has nothing to do with you. It's simply how you're positioning yourself. Now, with that said, the job market has not collapsed, even though it may feel like it. It simply evolved into a new game and most people are playing by the old rules or just playing by no rules at all because they don't understand the market. You can either outwork everyone or you can outposition them and the second one wins almost every single time. Now we've seen it over and over, the moment a developer fixes how they present themselves, everything changes, 
recruiters who ignored them at the start actually start reaching out to them. Interviews stop feeling like interrogations and they start feeling like conversations like I talked about earlier. And that's what I want for every developer watching this, right? To stop feeling like you're powerless and to start taking control again. At the end of the day, it's your action that's going to lead to a result. You can sit there, send out thousands of applications and pray that you get something, but that's not really taking action, right? That's literally just playing the lottery and hoping that someone sees your profile. You don't need luck. You don't need 10 plus years of experience. You need clarity, leverage, and importantly, a system. You need to know the rules to play and how to follow it, right? Now that's what's actually working right now.